There are many comedy types of content in modern anime, but very few horror types, because they aren't scary at all. Most horror anime works rely on bloody scenes and chilling music to make the viewer feel scared. In addition to these two points, the style of horror anime generally tends to be realistic. It is necessary to immerse the viewer as much as possible, otherwise it will easily turn into a comedy anime. While some comedy manga will also insert horror plot settings to create a sense of contrast, but its essence has never changed. It's very difficult to make the viewer feel both the funny and the scary aspect in the same work. However, there is one work that perfectly completed this challenge. It used nearly 290 chapters of manga to depict a slice of life, harem, and comedic anime drama, and then directly turned the tag to horror in the last 10 chapters. It is Sayonara Zetobo Sensei. I think even if I directly tell the viewers who don't know Zetobo Sensei about how peculiar this ending is, they still won't understand. So, I want to spend a few minutes to explain to the new viewers what kind of work Zetsubo Sensei is. First, just by taking a look at the art style, and you will know that this is not a realistic style of anime. The art style is simple, and the way the manga expresses the emotions of the characters are only through lines and shadows. Similar to the anime Kagushikoto from the previous years, they are all from the same author. To be honest, the author Kumata Koji is also a bit abnormal. His previous works were often cut, and he began to despair thinking that his works may only be animated in his next life. Then, Zetsubo Sensei was animated. In order to prove that he was not wrong, he held a funeral for himself while he was still alive, announcing that he was dead in his previous life. And now, his work can be animated. By the way, the photo that appeared in the first season's opening of the Zetsubo Sensei anime is the photo he used in his own funeral. The work of such a genius author meets another genius director, Shinbo Akiyuki. Bake Monogatari and Madoka Magica are all his works. The styles of these two works are different from those of their colleagues, and the work they co-created, Sayonara Zetsubo Sensei, is definitely completely different from other classic comedy works. Because the main content of this anime is basically concentrated in the beginning and the end, these two parts. If you don't want to be spoiled, you can just watch the first 5 episodes of the anime to understand the general framework of the story and some of the characters, and then directly go read the last 10 chapters of the manga. But I don't recommend this time-saving method. Sayonara Zetsubo Sensei's protagonist, Itoshiki Nozomu, is based on No Longer Human's author, Dazai Osamu. He is a very hopeless man who has negative thoughts about everything. Every time he encounters a minor setback, he would think about committing suicide. On the contrary, heroine Fuura Kapuka is a female who is full of hope for everything and thinks about everything through a positive attitude, explaining the protagonist's suicidal behavior as a new way to become taller. The beginning of the anime tells the story about the encounter of these two completely opposite souls. Kafuka sees the protagonist who is about to hang himself, and in the process of wanting to save him, almost killed him. The protagonist asks, what if I had died? Which shows that the protagonist is not a person who really wanted to commit suicide. While the heroine asked the protagonist not to be so short-sighted, and pulled down on the hanging person the second she saw him, and in the next second said that no one would die on such a beautiful spring day. It can also be seen that the heroine is not as kind as she may seem. Then, the two of them arrive at the same school, and we find out that Nozomu was a teacher of Kafuka's class. Because Itoshiki Nozomu's Japanese name is written as Zetsubo, meaning despair, everyone calls him Zetsubo Sensei. It's not just the two of them. Most of the students in this class aren't quite normal. Kitsuchidi, a terrorist organization member, and Kobushi Abidu, a DB girl who can wrestle with tigers, Komori Kiri, a shut-in who lives in the school, Dunetsuki Matoi, a serial stalker, Hito Nami, the most normal one, Sekiyutsu Mariataro, the mascot who illegally immigrated to Japan, Otanashi Meru, the keyboard warrior with the shining finger, Kimura Kaide, the panties character whose dual personality has only been shown in two episodes, Kaga Ai, <laughs> Ogusa Manami, who is a high school student and also a wife, Mitama Mayo, the second member of the terrorist organization, and Fujiyoshi Haram, a yaoi girl. Their names are homophonic like Zetsubo Sensei, which directly correspond to their personalities. For more details, you can watch episode 10 of this anime's second season. In addition to these main characters, there are many side characters, and most of them like Itoshigi Nozomu. But this is not a romantic development of the harem, but more like a dark humor type. The author likes to concretize a vague concept or phenomenon to satirize society. I know that a lot of people who watch my videos come for Detective Conan, so I directly used Zetsubo Sensei's first season's episode 12's pattern on Detective Conan. This episode is used to discuss the unbelievable phenomenon of too much evidence within society. 
For example, in the case of Detective Conan, a culprit who did not prove the alibi had obvious motives for committing a crime and had the fingerprints on the culprit's tool, so much evidence that can point out that they are the culprit, the real culprit is definitely not them. Or in the fifth episode of the first season, where everyone went to the hot springs together, and this hot spring can remove the toxins from a person's body. This toxin actually represents a flaw of a character. Nozomu teaches his students that some appropriate flaws are also part of the charm for the characters. If every character was perfect, then many classic fictional characters in the world will become homogenous. Adding on to these creative plots of the author, the director of this anime has also exerted his imagination as much as possible, opening a path that other anime cannot do to make Zetsubo Sensei more unique. Have you ever seen several different art styles in one episode of an anime? It's like the reality show in episode 7 of this anime's second season. Music shows of the last century, ninjas plus magic girls, cooking shows, painting shows, children's love drama cartoons, silhouette animation, pastel animation, cutout animation, plasticine animation, etc etc. There were some art styles that I couldn't even find the proper nouns for. Among them, my favorite is the art style like the witches in Madoka Magica, or maybe the weird paper cutout styles of Madoka, which was Shimbo's inspiration when he made Zetsubo Sensei. Some art styles will also change according to the needs of the plot. For example, the story in the fourth episode of the second season tells that when important events happen, the viewers will always pay attention to some insignificant things. In order to show this, the plot of this episode suddenly becomes like Ultraman, and the protagonist and them grows larger to deal with the alien invaders. It was obviously such an intense plot, but I didn't even notice what the content of this episode was about, because my attention was all attracted by the sudden change in the art style, the Neon Genesis Evangelion references, and the small clips in the middle of the plot. In the second season, in order to express that people sometimes prefer to watch antique movies with audio crackles that have been detuned compared to high definition movies, the anime production team made the animation of the opening of the entire season into different resolutions. Not only just the art style, they also like to play around with the cast voice actors, as they change the voice actors and characters without any reason. Looking at the entire anime industry as a whole, very few anime dare to try this innovative behavior. In addition, Detective Conan, Death Note, Key, etc. These references all appeared in Zetsubo Sensei. It's a bit like Gintama, but compared to Gintama, most of the references in Zetsubo Sensei are very obscure. Some require an understanding of Japanese, while others, even after googling it, I still don't know what they mean. And as a director, Shinbo Akiyuki likes the style of fast switching scenes. The viewer's brain needs to process a lot of information every second while watching this anime, most of which are difficult to understand. So some viewers can't enjoy this anime at all, feeling that it will take an hour just to completely watch and understand one episode. At the same time, this anime also involves many sensitive themes, from the national government to a specific person. The author can satirize them again and again, which makes Zetsubo Sensei destined to be unacceptable by most viewers. I'm afraid that this video might be blocked, so I'll try to choose a less sensitive one from those themes, that is, the author's satirization of media hype and short news cycle in the first episode of this anime's second season. In this episode, the author turns the internet into a festival, turning mass media into Mokoshi, and media hype this phenomenon, also like Kerry Mokoshi. To ridicule those news segments that exaggerate some normal things, adding words like most, top, and so on in the headline of the news is done to attract readers to preview it. Like the once in a lifetime beauty every 3000 years, and the ranking of the top 10 best anime. Simply put, it is to force personal wishes into a generally recognized title. Most people don't take this kind of news too seriously, but a small number of people will join them to lift the Mokoshi together and lift that Mokoshi to a height that does not belong to it. If they encounter someone that likes Mokoshi with the same Mokoshi loving characteristic as them, be it keywords, influences, imitation, it's time for the keyboard warriors to appear. As the Mokoshi becomes higher and higher, various peripheral products began to appear and they will not stop looking for the next target until the commercial value of that Mokoshi has been completely drained. Some Mokoshi, known as internet idols, will also help themselves make up with Photoshop to make them look better, attracting those lifting the Mokoshi to give themselves influence. In the last part of lifting the Mokoshi, there's really no subject matter, and afterwards they start making fiction, spreading rumors, etc. In the short 10 minute story, who the hell knows how much the author satirizes, especially through this funny way. Sometimes the author doesn't even let himself off the hook. The tragic man who looks like a hobo in the anime is the author himself. And the frequent appearance of the naked weirdo wearing a bra is the author's assistant. This also includes his former apprentice, Hata Kenjiro, author of Hayate the Combat Butler. 
Because Kumeta is jealous that his apprentice's works are selling better than him, and the fact that his apprentice did not come to his funeral, he often satirizes him in his works. Up until this point, Zetsubo Sensei is just a harem anime, with a lot of dark humor and satirical aspects added daily. Apart from that special technique of expression, there's really nothing special about the plot. This is how I felt before, when I had only read 290 chapters of the manga, and it was the last 10 chapters that completely subverted my perception of the whole work. And it also made me understand why the name of this work is called Sayonara Zetsubo Sensei, Goodbye Mr. Despair. As early as the first episode, this work had already spoiled its finale.